Uh, Jay O'Brien, uh, thank you. Uh, some people on the school committee have replaced disagreement with accusation and used false compassion to manipulate parents into compliance. This is the same school committee who at my very first school committee meeting of several years ago, when I spoke, immediately shut down the Zoom chat feature so I could not correspond with other parents who were also opposed to masking kids. During the last meeting, after I had spoke most recently uh, in the August meeting, someone else then used words <clears throat> like undertones, transphobia, and homophobia. First, gay people have as much in common with trans people as straight people do. Secondly, I will not sit by and let someone besmirch my family's good name or the names of other parents in town who oppose radical gender theory in public schools. I should not have to say this for it goes without saying and it cuts into my two minutes of time, but we've always perceived trans people as valuable members of society worthy of respect and human rights. <clears throat> Another horrible comment was made by a non-committee citizen who said parents who oppose the gender cult ideology are afraid of our kids becoming trans. What a disgusting thing to say. These comments can't go unanswered. Do you think someone can give you trans like it's the China virus? We're talking about poisoning young impressionable minds. <clears throat> the people are trying to rule through emotional blackmail to impose a political agenda on the rest of us. If we dissent, we're branded as bigots and accused of lacking empathy. The people pushing this use antagonism, emotional manipulation, and an accusatory tone that has become the staple with the gender theory and mask pushers. The goal of this is not to arrive at answers, but to browbeat parents like me and make me feel bad for denying left-wing orthodoxy. Dr. Patel, we have to have new leadership. We have to have a new leadership class that says no. It's the most important word in the English language. We don't say it enough. We have to reestablish limits on behavior and reestablish authority. Thank you. Oh, thank Hi, you. everyone. Uh, my name is Nadia Ahmed. I'm here to voice my concerns over forcing kids to listen to sex ed and LGBTQ, LGBTQ content um, that has penetrated the gender curriculum. I sympathize with those who are truly struggling with gender identity, but sympathizing with one minority should not come at the expense of another. Some would say that, some would say that LGBTQ members are at high risk of attempting suicide, Therefore, our kids should be forced to learn about their identities. A study at Stanford University concluded that American Muslims have twice the rate of suicide attempts compared to others. Based upon that, should we force kids at FPS to start thinking about converting to Islam? Should we force them to start praying like Muslims? That would be ridiculous to ask. There is a clear difference between raising awareness about something and, and then forcing it, to on, forcing it on people. This forceful attitude is making Muslims and all concerned parents feel helpless about the situation. All we are asking is to give us the option to opt out wherever there's a discussion around sex ed and LGBTQ. Please do not make us feel worthless. A simple option to, for parents to exempt their kids out of this curriculum or out of this discussion won't hurt the LGBTQ members at all. But not having any option is hurting a lot of us. The decision is yours to make. Thank you. Thanks. Last week, uh, last meeting, there was a lot of gasping and wide-eyed pearl clutching around how such hateful people in Sharon could dare speak out against non-academic, highly problematic gender ideology being promoted in classrooms. So I did some research. Are trans people really victimized? Let's put it into context given the recent horrors endured by actual victims. Did you know that there are 36 national holidays dedicated to LGBTQ plus? In October alone, there is Intersex Awareness Day, Lesbian Day was Sunday, Pronouns Day, Spirit Day, and today is National Coming Out Day. Guess what else? We have Ace Week for Asexuals, Gender Fluid Visibility Week, and this entire month is LGBT History Month. And that's just October. I've never seen such an oppressed group be so nationally celebrated. So it is a lie that trans people are under attack or my favorite hyperbole being genocided. According to the human rights campaign, there were 40 reported cases, four zero of trans individuals losing their lives to violent incidents in 2022. To put this in perspective, this constitutes 0. 0.000025 of the 1.6 
million trans identified people in 2022. These statistics suggest that trans people may be among the safest demographic groups when it comes to violent deaths in the United States. So there is a big difference between tolerance, which is what it used to be, and forced celebration that some members of this board and this community really need to differentiate between. I will end with this. Normal adults, do not get angry that they can't talk to children about sex. Predators and perverts do. Remember that. Sharon, Sharon proudly proclaims itself in lawn signs all over town uh, that it's no place for hate. And of course, I completely agree with that. That's why I feel compelled to call out the hateful, intolerant, disgusting comments at the last school committee meeting. I'm appalled. I was nauseated. I won't name names. You, you know who you are. The hateful name calling was directed at families with traditional values and complaining that a small minority of parents are somehow dominating the situation. First of all, it's not true. In my experience, it's not a minority of parents. It's a minority of parents that aren't afraid to be called names. The majority of parents are afraid to even speak out because of this hateful name calling. These are vicious attacks by school committee members. It's, it's embarrassing to the town. Those people should be ashamed. Moreover, we live in a country with a constitution that's been designed to protect minority rights. We don't believe in the, in, in the tyranny of the majority, nor did our founders. I think apologies are in order. I think the people who did this should be ashamed. In my opinion, I believe they should resign. There's no place at the school committee table for people who engage in those kind of hateful comments. Another member of the committee disclosed proudly that there are confidential discussions ongoing with an attorney to figure out ways to bypass opt-out so that we could get rid of opt-out. You know, attorneys don't work for free. I don't recall when the school committee voted to authorize spending on an attorney for secret negotiated, secret discussions to devise novel legal theories to eliminate opt-out. I do agree that opt-out needs to go. It doesn't work. It's not being right, done in minutes. good faith. That's two minutes. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, Members of the school committee, um, I just want to say that we moved to Sharon because we love our children and Sharon is a great place to raise children. I love that in our town, we have families from so many different backgrounds who are all united in their love of their children and who are dedicated to education, who value education. And I was very sad to hear that at the last meeting you said, or some members of the committee said, that you felt that some families in Sharon had the wrong values and that you were looking for legal loopholes to try to change those values. That uh, all that the parents who are coming to these school committees want is to raise our own children according to our own values. Thank you. I thank the school committee members for allowing me the chance to talk. I would like to thank you all for your efforts. We are a Muslim family. We live in Sharon since 2017. We moved to Sharon for its diverse, inclusive community and excellent school system. We were hoping to practice our religious freedom and pass our faith, uh, religion, and principles to our children. Matters related to sex and gender, in particular, are surrounded with clear morals and guidance in our faith. As we requested to have the right to opt out of such education, um, which contradicts our faith, during the last school committee meeting, we were labeled as homophobic, transphobic, and people of hate by school committee members and members of the public as well. Uh, I, would, I would like to clarify that this has nothing to do with hate. This comes out of sincere belief in our faith and a sincere desire to raise our children on certain values. Sharon schools do not discriminate based on religion. It was mentioned multiple, multiple times in this meeting that we want every child to feel welcomed. And I would like the same for my kids as well. We, re we request to respect our values and provide an option to opt out. Thank you so much for giving me the chance. Hello, thank you, school committee, for the opportunity to speak. And like some other people voiced, I was a bit hurt by some comments from the last school committee. 
by the last school committee disparaging comments equating opting out from LGBT and sex subjects to rejecting learning about others' cultures and religions, such as Islam and Judaism. Remember, those were mentioned. And equating the LGBT lifestyle, which is pretty much a recent emergence in the world culture to ancient traditions, is a is kind of foolish. And it was disparaging to hear them call us like hate monk, like various names, <laughs> which people already mentioned. That's all. Thank you for your time. Yeah, hi. Uh, we are a Muslim family. I live in Sharon since 2017. And we came here because of the diversity and uh, we people respect uh, different background, different culture, different religion. And we respect all culture and every, all religion, but we also expect people to respect ours. And uh, we really want to uh, express uh, our uh, dissatisfaction of uh, uh, that the district is trying to uh, like teaching kids about LGBTQ and uh, like, you know, different uh, things that's not even related to their age, they're very young kids. And uh, we actually, this is, uh, has the values they're trying to teach them actually um, disagree with our values. And we wanna be able to raise our kids the way we wanted to raise them. And we expect everybody to do that, uh, to respect that. And we don't wanna impose our uh, values to anybody else or anybody else, but uh, also we expect the same from others. Thank you.